Hey Skiers, I'm Jeff from SkiEssentials.com. Welcome to another episode of our Top 5 Fridays Ski Industry News videos. Um, before we get into the actual news, uh, we just ra wrapped up the entry period in the March Ski Happy Photo Contest sponsored by K2. Um, head on over to our Instagram page. Uh, you can vote on the winning photo. We basically selected the top three and we let you guys decide the winner out of those three photos. Um, so head on over. You have through the weekend to kind of submit your comment with your vote, just the number one, two, or three. Uh, and then we will announce and contact the overall winners uh, middle of next week or so. Um, so yeah, check them out uh, and pick your favorite, and maybe that person will walk home with some uh, K2, K2 Wayback or Talkback 96 skis. Um, and yeah, I think with that, we can get right into the news. Um, even though we kind of did our FIS Alpine recap or overall, you know, we kind of wrapped up the season last week. Uh, we have another topic about FIS Alpine ski racing. Um, and it's kind of a cool, kind of a cool topic. Um, this is something that's, you know, kind of a a trending topic across all sports is the the equality of prize money um, between men's and women's sports um, interestingly the top three prize money winners in the fis alpine season were all women um, so lara gut barami uh, she was the number one earner at about the equivalent of $515,000 US dollars. Um, Petra Vlova was $472,000 and Michaela Schifrin was sitting there right in third at $436,000. Um, so really cool to see that at least in the sport of skiing, uh, there's tremendous equality between men and women on the competitive side. Um, yeah, I, I just think it's really cool. Um, and congratulations to those three women. Um, and then we've got another couple ski racing topics. Um, this is an article from Outside Online that just popped up yesterday. Um, Lindsey Vaughn kind of officially or unofficially, however you want to perceive it, uh, anointed Breezy Johnson as the next U.S. woman to follow in her footsteps and uh, Peekaboo Street's footsteps in terms of downhill success or speed event success. So clearly Breezy Johnson's been turning some heads this season, including the head of Lindsey Vaughn. Um, and she kind of, Lindsey Vaughn kind of cited like how she really looked up to Peekaboo Street when she was growing up and, and felt like she followed in her footsteps. And it felt like kind of an invitation to Breezy as like, here you go, like you're the, ne you're the next in line. Um, and I, I am really excited, as I've said before, to see, see how she can ski over the next couple of years and see, and see what happens with her ski career. Um, also, ski, ski magazine has an interview with Breezy Johnson, uh, which kind of goes through her season and, and has some insights into her mindset and stuff like that. So if you're interested in that stuff, head on over, check out both those articles. Um, pretty, pretty cool to see. Uh, second topic of the week, we're still in the FIS world. Um, in this one, we're in the freestyle, free ski, free ski side of things. Um, that has all wrapped up now. Uh, we had the final slope style over the past week. Colby Stevenson took the win in what I would call stylish and commanding fashion. Um, he's been skiing really, really well this season. I think it was a couple weeks ago that he got second, and I said, like, I'm pretty sure he should have won, or at least in my opinion, he should have won very similar run or at least very similar jump tricks in this run um and yeah he took home the win and and yeah i mean he, he's he's hard to beat right now for sure um, and that win actually secured him both the overall freestyle park and pipe globe as well as the slope style globe um, so colby stevenson's headed home with a couple crystal globes to uh, cap off a a successful competitive ski season for him um, and then also just a quick nod to Alex Hall, who finished third this week. Uh, both of those two, you know, they're kind of the leaders of the U.S. slope style crew right now. Uh, both had great seasons. Um, kind of an iffy or at least interesting season on the park and pipe side of things. Uh, five of a total of nine events were canceled. 
Um, but I'd say out of the four events that we still had, it was a really successful year for the U.S. team. Um, a lot of promising athletes, a lot of younger guys on the team too, younger than Colby and Alex, who you know, will be kind of next in line to, to carry that torch. Um, so, yeah, it, it's cool to see, you know, heading into an Olympic season. Um, it, it's going to be exciting watching, watching Colby and Alex and, and see what they can accomplish. Uh, and then third topic of the week, we titled this one, Uphill Accomplishments. Uh, I might mispronounce her name, so my apologies in advance. Martina Valmoso. Uh, she broke the 24-hour uphill record for a female skier. So that's most vertical feet skied by a female in 24 hours in a jaw-dropping 57,890 total, total vertical feet in 24 hours. That's insane. Um, for reference, if you are local to Stowe or if you're familiar with Stowe, that would be like skinning top to bottom, either quad or gondola, either lift, but top to bottom that terrain 29 times in 24 hours. So yeah, no, I won't be doing that. Um, so yeah, hats off to her. That's an unbelievable accomplishment. And then Alex, Alex Goff, um, he Everest, Everested, Everested? Everested uh, Mount Pisgah in, in uh, the Adirond Adirondacks. Um, if you're unfamiliar with the term, basically means that you ski enough or climb enough, it's kind of a mountaineering term, to cover 29,032 vertical feet, the, the elevation of Mount Everest. Um, now, Mount Pisgah is only 300 vertical feet, so it took him 93 laps. Um, and perhaps the most impressive part of that is that means there were that many uh, transitions from, from uphill to downhill, um, which is, that seems like the, at least the most annoying part, uh, not the most physically tiring part, but yeah, sometimes when you're out touring, like fiddling around with your bindings is like the last thing you want to do. Um, so pretty impressive that he did that. And I just think it's a, I like things like that, that like this was clearly a silly idea, um, but he did it. And I, I think it's a great accomplishment. So pretty cool to see some, some uphill highlights this, this week. Um, and then we wanted to kind of recap the ski industry, April fools highlights. We didn't do anything. We just released an actual review. Uh, but the ski industry really seems to love April Fools and kind of really gets behind it every season. And there's always some highlights. Um, I think it's fair to say that there are often or always some misses too. Uh, I, I'm not going to call anybody out specifically. Maybe you guys want to in the comments. But I saw some stuff where I was just kind of like, all right, now, now you're trying too hard. Like this that wasn't funny and this is silly and like a couple things felt like borderline insulting to certain people um so yeah there's there's a mix of successes among these april fools ski industry news things um the one that really stood out to me was J skis velcro tech carbon xt black edition bindings uh, if you haven't seen it, you've got to go watch it. Jason Leventhal is a character. Um, he's such a down-to-earth, positive guy, and he clearly devoted, like, a lot of time making this video. Um, but I think he did it in, like, a really fun way. Um, and, you know, it felt like he was kind of poking fun at the ski industry in general, which is something that he often does. Um, but I thought he did it in the right way, you know, in a, in a healthy, fun way. Um, I was cracking up about it because we reviewed the Elan Ripstick 106 Black Edition yesterday. And then his, in the title of his video, it had Black Edition. And I was, it is hilarious when he first says the name of his, of his Velcro Tech Carbon XT Black Edition because he just kind of keeps adding on things. Um, so... Great job to Jason Leventhal. The other one that really jumped out to me was Freeride World Tour announced the introduction of a mono board world tour or mono ski world tour, uh, which I think is a great idea. Um, it's 100% a joke, but that would be 
pretty darn entertaining to watch and pretty terrifying to compete in. Um, so, yeah, hats off to, to those of you out there that had hilarious April Fool's posts. Um, and then finally, we have our edits of the week. Uh, pretty good week for edits, I thought. Uh, Marcus Etter has a about a four or five minute edit um, called An Empty Ski Resort in Me. You know, European ski resorts or a lot of European ski resorts, depending on the country, have been closed for most of the season. Um, so he was able to get basically private access to a ski resort. He had a snowmobile taking him up for laps. Um, and yeah, as you can imagine, skiing a resort with nobody else there is pretty fun. Um, so check that out. Uh, and then we have a edit from TGR uh, called Todd Laguerre Hallways. Um, Todd Laguerre is a, a fantastic skier, um, very stylish, very strong, very technically sound. Um, a lot of really, really good powder shots in this. I thought it was interesting that both of those edits also used um, hip hop or, or rap music in their, in, in, as the soundtrack. Um, that's not always something that you see in like kind of more all mountain or powder themed edits. Um, and I liked it. I thought it brought like a, a unique feel to the videos compared to most things in that category. Um, and then Red Bull Snowmads, uh, they have like a short film, seven or eight minutes, uh, called A Journey Through the World of Iran. Um, pretty unbelievable stuff. They both document the uniqueness of that region, um, what traveling through it is kind of like, as well as some pretty unbelievable terrain. Um, so check out all three of those. Yeah, I, I feel pretty strongly that you should go watch all three of the edits of the week this week because they're all really good. Um, and yeah, that's it. That's it for Top 5 Fridays this week. Make sure you go vote on the Ski Happy uh, Top 3, and we will talk to you guys next week.